Hi YouTube, Coin Picker here. Here are my thrift store finds for the past couple weeks. Well, anyways, to start off, found a little piece of costume jewelry. It was like close to five dollars, but look at this pretty cool name brand, Christian Dior. So checked online, uh, these actually sell between a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars. So that would be good for a little bit of a eBay sale. And next, got some silver. Got this out of the 99 cent uh, souvenir junk bin, uh, souvenir spoon junk bin, I should say. And it's pretty cool. I believe it is Danish silver. Let me just get a close up on the mark. Yeah, 830 silver. So 83% silver. There's the maker's name. Pretty cool. And let me see how much it weighs. I'm going to pull out the good old scale. All right, how many grams? All right, 15 grams. So it's roughly about $15 Canadian of silver value, roughly. But collector's value, I would say at least, mm, I don't know, 20 to $25. Pretty cool. Antique. I don't know what exact year it was made. I'm, I'm assuming like maybe the 1930s, 40s. No, maybe not that. Uh, it's funny with these sort of things, it's either very, very old or like not very old. I don't know if that makes sense. Like going by the style, it could be turn of the century or it could be from the sixties. Really hard to say. Well, anyways, if anyone has any, any information, um, just, I was being lazy. I could have done the research, but I didn't, but anyone knows, put in a comment and what else do we have here? All right, you see this little bit of gold. It is, I believe it's 14K. It's, it has a marking. But I uh, had to deliver something to the post office and I saw this glint on the sidewalk while I was walking and I knew right away it was gold. So I nonchalantly picked it up and put it in my pocket. All right, this way is like next to nothing. All right, let's see if it even registers. On the scale but hey I'll take free gold any day of the week it's funny it's not the first time I found cash or gold uh, in the streets very rare but it does happen just have to pay attention all right it is probably less than half a gram but it all adds up I'll throw that in my um, little I guess uh, you could say little um, gold hoard. Always have these little baggies. I separate out the, you know, like the um, scrap. All right. And then I found this at the Salvation Army thrift store in the costume jewelry section. And it is a nice sterling necklace. All right, it was $8.99. And it is marked. It's marked 9 to 5, I believe, on the clasp. But I'm not sure if this pendant is sterling. But I will weigh it. Anyways. All right. 25 grams. So let's say without this pendant, let's take off um, 10 grams, maybe a little less than that. So at the very least, I've at least doubled my money in silver without the pendant. And what else, what more silver items? Um, all right, this may look a little pricey, 
$49.99. No discount on, on this. It was at the Salvation Army thrift store in the Buy It Now case. So we have a cool charm bracelet, Mark 925. And we have like, I think it, I counted, it's like close to 30 individual charms. And some are pretty cool. Check this out. Actually, a lot are pretty cool. So you see a cuckoo clock, bag of golf clothes, is that a koala bear? Cham champagne glasses and a bottle of champagne. An angel, coat of arms. All right, someone went to New York. You see that Statue of Liberty. A lot of cool charms on here. And let's say on the average, if I were to sell them, I would say 10 bucks a charm on eBay. That's, we're looking at at least 300 bucks right here. But I like these things. I'll probably throw it in with the hoard. The only thing which was not sterling was this Cuban one centavos. I think it is aluminum. Uh, most likely I will take that off because it's not silver. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll leave it. But yeah, a lot of cool charms. And get this, it is actually quite heavy. Uh, silver alone, I did make a profit. So I basically paid in Canadian dollars like one and a half ounces of silver price because it was like a little bit over 50 bucks with the uh, taxes. But how many grams is that? It's worth about a little bit over hundred dollars Canadian in scrap. So hmm. So I pretty much doubled my money in scrap value. But obviously I'm not, I'm not gonna scrap this. Very nice, very heavy. It's like like close to three ounces. So yeah, I paid half half price silver. And next, all right, so much silver. All right, next I found this little sterling plate at the Value Village. And it was funny because I think my buddy said, hey, you know, there's some uh, sterling silver at the Value Village. Some guy found a whole bunch, little bowls or, or whatnot. Um, so I actually went the very next day and uh, either the guy missed this one or they had more, you know, pulled out from the back after he left from the same uh, donation. But it is marked. Where is the mark? I'll just have a glance. Where, oh, where? Hmm. You never see the mark when you really need to. But it did say sterling uh well anyways it is somewhere there uh i'll probably i'll probably um add a picture of the mark into this video well anyways let's see what we made on this one so i paid a little bit over five bucks did I make a profit? Well, obviously I did, or else I wouldn't have bought it. So it's about 50 bucks Canadian. So I made 10 times my money. Pretty good. All right. And then I'm gonna leave the best for last, but uh, it was a good couple of weeks uh, worth of finds. And some of the finds were really up my alley, the stuff I always look for. And we have some Chinese porcelain. And uh, the age, it could poss possibly be from the mid-1800s or the turn of the uh, 20th century. So like early 1900s, not too sure. But it uh, has this undulating shape, this design. Peaches, flowers, and I guess leaves and stuff like that check this out and there is these little black dots were which is basically like iron deposits leaching out to the surface that's what i heard 
um, basically showing its age. And I think this is called like anemoling. Well, you can see the foot shows considerable wear and age. Probably close look at that. When it's white and clean, you know it is usually a repop. Because actually the porcelain these days um, is actually better quality than back in the day. Well, for this grade of export wear. So very nice, no chips or dings or cracks, which is lovely. Yeah, very nice. And I believe um, I paid, what was it? I think it was like $6.99 at the Value Village. It was a new donation, um, didn't have a price tag and they just said, uh, $6.99 and I thought sold so yeah that's a bargain um, this I would say in a antique store would probably sell about maybe two or three hundred dollars doesn't seem like much but uh, this is considered uh, I guess the lower grade um, Chinese antique but still it fits well into my collection and then we have, you could say, um, what I deem as a bucket list item for my thrifting. At first glance, I didn't think much of it. I thought, okay, uh, an empty liquor decanter. Oops. And it was $12.99. And it was in the glass section. And I saw, hmm, actually it's quite nice. There's no breaks or cracks. And it says here, Louis the 18th, Remy Martin, Grand Champagne Cognac. And I thought, okay, no biggie, you know. Uh, I think I, on that day there was like no goodies and I just saw it on the shelf and I just took a better look at it and i remember when i was in my youth um these sort of fancy cognacs you know at the liquor store would be like two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars i think if my memory serves me correctly so i thought oh okay uh, empty bottle you know maybe some people collect it and um when i looked closely if you could look right on the stopper it actually is marked, so it has a matching stopper. But look at this. It says Remy Martin Baccarat, France. I'm going to close up on this. Marking. It's very difficult. Well, anyways, it's Baccarat glass, which I've always been on the lookout for. It's like a fancy, I don't know, you could say crystal company in France. Crystal or glass. And it also has the same stamp, the maker's mark right there in the circle, if you can see. And I always wanted a piece of Baccarat glass, uh, be it a, um, a, you know, like a wine glass or tumbler or um, container. But I uh, asked my, um, actually, but before I bought it, I did check online and on the eBay, these things empty. And even with a little bit of damage, broken you know, little bits, they were reselling for approximately two or three hundred dollars Canadian, which is very similar to the value of this. 
Uh, and then um, I was um, asking my friend, my uh, collecting buddy, thrifter, fellow thrifter, about this. And, uh, you know, I was saying, oh, I remember these when they used to be in full, you know, used to cost like two or three hundred bucks or maybe up to a thousand. And I don't know, I don't really, I don't drink. And, you know, maybe I'm dating myself, but my friend goes, where have you been? You know, you go to the liquor store, this brand new, full, with a big fancy box, it's like seven grand. I go, seriously? Wow. You know, I guess rich people have rich people taste. Well, I'm not one of them anyways. But seven grand for a bottle of cognac. I go, whoa. So, I mean, a couple hundred bucks for the deposit, um, I guess, is normal. So twelve ninety nine, it's worth at least two to three hundred bucks. I thought that's a steal. And again, uh, other than the brand of liquor, uh, I really bought it for the manufacturer's name, which is Baccarat. I don't know, do I like it because it sort of reminds me of that famous game, like at the casino, Baccarat. You know, like card, famous card game. I don't know, like of the wealthy. But uh, yeah, that was cool. And I think a year or so ago, I saw the box for this at another um, thrift store. I think it was a Val Value Village in Vancouver. It was a like big fancy box and the Value Village, it was empty, right? And the Value Village wanted like 40 or 50 bucks just for the box. So I don't know if it would have added to the value of um, putting them together, but obviously I wouldn't buy an empty box for so much money hoping to find the bottle down the road, you know, like my crystal ball was broken at the time. So, you know, anyways, but I'm very happy with this bottle. This will go into my nice curio cabinet and I saved the best for last. My most recent find, all right, do one more glance over. I love these little glass, uh, Fleur de Lis medallions, very cool, very nice. All right, best for last. Rarely, rarely do I ever find collectible coins at the thrift store, especially at the Value Village, which is for-profit thrift store, right? So, all right, so I left the best for last and it is the most recent find. All right, very funny because it actually came out of the Value Village, which is a for-profit thrift store. They get the stuff for free, but they keep like 95% of the profit, or give or take. I rarely find collectible coins at the Value Village or any thrift store in general. And I found two very collectible coins. First of all, I saw this in their display ca case. And it is a one ounce Justice League Marvel, Justice League, I think it's Marvel. Well, anyways, one of those superhero coins. Um, it says here, 2018 $20 fine silver coin, the Justice League Cyborg and Superman 99.99% pure. And then it says the same thing in French because we are a bilingual English French country. And it is made by the Royal Canadian Mint. Sorry, Marvel. Did I say Marvel? I meant DC. DC comic books. So it says here, all DC characters, blah, blah, blah. DC comic books, Warner Brothers. Okay, cool. So it shows all of the symbols of each of the superheroes. And I saw also in the display case. Actually, I saw this, I think I saw the second. First of all, I saw this big box. It says Mickey, the true or original, Disney, 90 years of magic. I was thinking, okay, is it one of those silly silver plated medallions that people call collector's items? And when they actually have to say collector's items on it, usually it's not collectible. They actually sell on the resale market for less than the original price. But I did ask the lady, pull it out and this one came out of the 
Let me see. Value Village right outside of Vancouver. I won't say which one because I don't need any more competition. But uh, yeah, $79.99. Very fancy box. And bingo, right away when I read the box, it said it's two ounce silver coin limited edition. Awesome. All right, that was already a good sign. Very good sign. And then this is already one ounce. So that was $79.99. I did the math. Sterling or silver value alone, we're talking about, it's about the same price, I guess like $34 an ounce Canadian. So that was $68, $68 of silver. So I'm paying like $10 plus taxes, like 14, roughly 14 bucks premium on it. But since it was a limited run production, 5,000 um, pieces, I knew that it would not be such a cheap uh, premium when it was brand new. So, all right. So it has this big fancy box. Check this out. It has this little booklet. And oh, I love these huge two ounce coins. It's like, it's from New Zealand, from Niue. I'm slaughtering the name. But it was, yeah, it's still in its case, never been cracked open. Beautiful. And I couldn't really find many comparables on it. And right before I purchased it, I did find one. And it was like resold, or actually a lot of the one ounce coins were online as sales history. But the two ounce, I found one comparable and it was like 200 bucks. Canadian. So I knew I'm getting it less than half off market value, right? And this one, the Justice League one, it's really cool. So you got the cyborg, you got Superman and their emblem, and this ray glows in the dark. Pretty cool. So this one didn't have a price at the time. So I asked the lady and she goes, hmm, face value, $20. Uh, so they must've sold it for 20 bucks back then. You know what, I'm gonna charge you $19.99. So she printed out a sticker for me. And I thought, wow, that's like face value. And the silver value is like 34 bucks. Uh, actually, I found out the retail value of this or the resale value, I guess, I don't know, retail, resale, I don't know. Uh, online prices of these usually go for a little bit over $100 Canadian, like 110 bucks. Not sure how much it went for from the mint when it was brand new, but I would say usually the mint charges three times the silver value. So yeah, I guess 99 bucks probably back in the day, maybe 89, 99, I don't know. But definitely 20 bucks was a steal. So, yeah, um, pretty awesome. Um, and this, I got like less than half off. Actually, you know what? I saved up enough points from the Value Village. Every dollar you spend, you get like, I think one point or something. And when you amass 100 points, you get, or they're pretty tricky these days. They say you get 30% off of maximum a $30 purchase. Or no, no, not 30%. 20% off a maximum $30 purchase. So it doesn't matter if it went over 30 bucks, I'm still only getting six bucks off. So I used it anyways, but be smart about it, you know, you guys. Um, I was like short, uh, before my purchases, I was like, I think I was at like 80, 80 points or something. So I told the lady, okay, I wanna buy this first, keep it separate, right? And then I just made it to 100 points, right? And then I paid for this second. So I was able to apply the $6 off of this coin. So that pretty much covered most of my tax. So I'm in this for a tiny bit over 80 bucks, right? So that was good. So sometimes you got to do a little math at the, the uh, cashier's till, you know, just whichever gives you the best discount, because if, if I didn't care and I 
did this, actually, yeah, if I pay for this first, then I'd have more than enough points. But then again, they would only given me, uh, let's see, 20%. So that's like four bucks. I would get four bucks off. But doing it the other way around, I got an extra two bucks off. Eh, you know, every bit counts. But anyways, here are my finds. Pretty awesome finds. You got like silver, antiques, uh, collectible glass, uh, collectible coins, and you know, silver coins. A uh, little bit of everything. Oh, and don't forget, yeah, silver jewelry and other collectibles. It was a pretty awesome couple weeks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep on searching the treasures out there. Uh, I wish everyone to be safe. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Coin Picker out. All right, usually I add a little bit bonus at the end, things I didn't buy, but actually I did buy this, but I didn't have a chance to put it in the video. It is an authenticated limited edition signed, uh, I think it's like 10 by 16 photo of a um, autograph photo of a hockey player. So I got it for like half price, $2.50. Bought this commercial grade popcorn popper. Uh, it was only like 35 bucks and it's worth probably a couple hundred bucks. I'm gonna just flip that. And here are the things I've seen, but I didn't buy. So this knife holder was pretty cool. Um, I knew something was stinky. Well, I'm just kidding. That was interesting. Uh, here is a glass paperweight. Not sure of the age, but it was cheap, but I have enough paperweights. And this is cool from the Philippines. It's a shell, but you have some see you know things inside plastic uh here is a cane that has a handle of a fish uh squished pennies 4.99 pretty interesting people's memories and here are some perfumes if i was a reseller th these things would probably resell uh for profit here's a matchbox vintage in the package toy if it was two bucks, I would have bought it. Um, some sort of Avon lantern perfume. Uh, this is a Repop. Always read, you know, the fine print. Like it says, it has a modern sticker saying, for collectors, not for children. Made in China, you know. So for sure, it's not old. Some gongs. I thought that was pretty cool. Karate cookie cutters. That's a first for me. And this is a vintage toy, pretty neat. And this is a toy slot machine, pretty heavy. A uh, vintage brand new can of uh, balls, rocket balls, some games, PC, I forgot the name of it. Um, another video game, vintage walkman type game player so for cassettes and to play this simple game on the front a uh, huge shell 1999 and this would have been cool like uh for resale like a camping heater brand new uh this is interesting it's a cheese board with knife and it's by a fancy name brand uh, ralph loren same company as polo this was pretty neat, $1.99. I thought this was funny. Uh, and these are vintage, but no stoppers. Uh, some Chinese cloisonne. Not too old, probably from the early 80s. And this little collection, of course, the gold uh, sample is missing, obviously. Cool, nonetheless this was neat a whole set of brand new spider-man uh, tumblers and this is neat i uh, always check the little baggies there's some cool stuff this is a i guess a repop of those japanese netsuke carvings sort of like uh, little toggle buttons well there you have it the things i did not buy